Okay, so uh, in this video, I'm just going to show you quickly how to use uh, the convolve command and the residue command in MATLAB. Now, uh, this is an example uh, to help you with dynamic modeling and control. What you see uh, ahead in front of you is a transfer function. All right, uh, it's here. Uh, and uh, to use the residue command, which will basically give you the partial fraction expansion, um, what you need is the numerator as one vector, and you need the denominator as one vector. But uh, you may be given something like this where you want to have things multiplied out. All right, so you have two options. You could either multiply them out. So for example, here I have s plus 10, s plus 2. So s plus 10, s plus 2, and I can multiply those together. So this is equal to s squared uh, plus 10s plus 2s plus 20, uh, which is equal to s squared plus 10s, or sorry, plus 12s plus 20. All right. Uh, or you could use a command in MATLAB which is called convolve, C-O-N-V. All right, and the way that convolve work it works is that you take uh, two vectors, so vector one and vector two. All right, and vector two could be a function of which is convolved as well. All right, you'll see that we could do. Uh, nested convolves. In fact, I'm going to add to this one more just to make it uh, more clear. All right. Um, and so you can do convolution to multiply these things together. And actually, these vectors are simply uh, represented as the coefficients uh, here. So, for example, this is s plus 10. So this would be 1, comma, 10. This is s plus 2, so this would be 1, comma, 2. All right, this bit over here is s, so this would be 1, comma, 0. All right, s, so uh, it's orders of s. So this is the uh, s to the 0, this is the s to the 1, uh, etc. Uh, and so that means that this one is going to be 1, comma, 0, comma, 5, where we have um, s to the 2, s to the 1, s to the 0, all right? And this would be 1, 3, 15. Make sense? Okay, so uh, now uh, let's do this in MATLAB. What I want to show you is, first of all, how the convolve works, um, and then I'll show you how to use residue. All right, let me say that out. It's residue. Uh, and you'll see that what you get is R P K is equal to residue of num den. All right, so let's go to MATLAB and check that out. All right, so um, I said let's do the convolution, C O N V, and let's go back and take a look. It's one comma ten and one comma two, so C O N V of one comma 10, comma, 1, comma, 2. And if I hit enter, what I'll see is that now it has multiplied these out. Now I have the coefficients. You'll see that the result, uh, if I go back to this original thing, the result should have been um, a vector that looked like 1, 12, 20. And that is, in fact, the coefficients that I get back as my numerator. Uh, coefficients. All right, so now I also want to define the denominator. Den is equal to convolve, and if you remember, the first thing was just an s, so that's 1, 0. All right, now con the convolve command can only put together two vectors at a time, uh, but it allows us to nest con con convolutions. So uh, Basically, what convolution does is it takes the two vectors and it combines them to make one. 
all right? So uh, if I have some nested statement, so C-O-N-V statement here, then uh, I could combine two more vectors. So let's look at what we want. Uh, we need 1, 0, 5, and 1, 3, 15. 1, 0, 5, and 1, 3, 15. All right, so now I've nested these together. You'll see that when I close the parentheses, this is a function we need to close the parentheses, uh, that it highlights, and we need to close the parentheses enough times that the one at the furthest left command uh, is closed. If I do one more, it'll make a noise at me and say, that's not okay. So uh, being very careful to do this, let's hit enter, and we'll see that now all these things are multiplied out. Okay, this is much easier than trying to multiply this stuff out by hand. All right, so now let's use the residue command. Now, if you're unfamiliar with how to use a command, you can always type help and then that command. So help residue in this case. And what it gives you is a lot of documentation. So you can read this. It wants RPK is equal to residue of BA, all right, where the B is the uh, polynomials. Uh, B would be the numerator. A would be the denominator, okay? So it's the residue and then the pole. So R is going to be the residue uh, or the partial fraction expansion value you find. P is going to be the pole, all right? And it's in a minus whatever form, okay? And KS, uh, in this case, it probably won't matter. This matters only if we have an improper system, which uh, you don't uh, really need to know the details on. All right, so let's try that. Let's do R. P, K is equal to residue of num den. All right, and what it returns is R. So these are my residues or my partial fraction expansion gain values that I found. P are my poles. All right, what I'll notice is that if I have a pole, uh, for example, at zero, it's still going to show me the complex number to match this, uh, but my gain is a real number. So if my pole has no imaginary part, if the imaginary part is zero, then my gain is going to be a real number. It makes sense to have a pole at zero because we have S, and what makes uh, S equal to zero? Well, just setting S to zero. Okay. Uh, if the pole is complex, as you see here, all right, complex values, uh, if the factor are complex, then the uh, value of the residue is also complex. And you see that these come in complex conjugate pairs, meaning that the only difference between them is the sign of the complex part. All right, so that's a fairly straightforward way uh, to see how to use residues. Uh, that should at least get you uh, through any questions where you might have to do that.